Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. My parents have always been a bit erratic. I mean, I'm not going to say they're terrible people or anything, but they're very, very far away from typical parents. My mother comes from a pretty wealthy family and she doesn't have any siblings. She met my father at a concert and they've been inseparable ever since. I guess when you have the luxury to do whatever on earth you want without worrying about the future, you can get as crazy as you want. My mother is an artist. She's pretty popular among niche collectors and her work is sold for good money. My dad, well, doesn't do much. Combined with the money from art and my mom's inheritance, they've lived pretty comfortably. My older brother was born when my mom was 32 and I was born two years later. My brother is just like my mom. They like the same type of music, he makes art, and my mom calls him her twin soul. I don't know why, but I could never relate to them. I've always felt disconnected from all my family. My brother started making art when he was very little and I often copied whatever he used to make, but wasn't creative myself. I felt like the odd one out in my family my whole childhood. Mom used to praise my brother all the time and tell him how talented he was, and all I could do was get good grades, which they didn't even care about. After a lifetime of living under my brother's shadow, I moved out at 18. My parents paid for my college education, which I'm grateful for, obviously, but apart from that, we haven't had much of a relationship since I've been an adult. The last big fight I had with them was eight years ago, which feels like forever now. My mom suddenly called me up out of the blue one day saying that she had been having dreams every day of her and dad being in an accident. She had been so disturbed by those dreams, she went to this fortune teller who preyed on her panic and told her that her life was in danger. I tried to reason with her, telling her that obviously none of that is true, but they wouldn't listen. She told me that she had decided to sell everything they own and move to Hawaii to be closer to nature or whatever. She was absolutely convinced that her life was about to end. I just gave up trying to be logical after a while. It was like talking to a wall. I half believed that this whole doomsday thing was an annoying phase that she would snap out of. But then they actually did go ahead and sold almost all of their assets. They took some of the money, enough for them to move to Hawaii, and gave the rest to my brother. They explained that he needs to be financially comfortable to create art without being burdened with money. I was honestly not expecting much from them, but being completely left out hurt me, and I cut off all contact with them after that. As I've said, that was almost eight years ago. Since then, I got married and have two kids of my own. I've had no contact with either my parents or my brother, but I do know that my brother hasn't found much success as an artist. Nowhere close to my mom, but I assumed he had some job or the other and the money our parents left him must have made things comfortable. I'm working as a paralegal right now while studying to be a lawyer. My husband owns a restaurant and even though we're not extremely rich or anything, we have a comfortable life with our children. I was happy to have a family where everyone feels loved. Everything was great until this morning. I've been so upset that I couldn't even go to work. I had just dropped my kids at school and was getting ready for work when I heard the doorbell ring. My husband was still sleeping because he came back very late last night after an event. I went to get the door and almost didn't recognize the two people standing there. It was mom and dad. They had changed so much, they were almost unrecognizable. It took me a moment to get over the initial shock, and then I obviously asked them to come in. They came to the living room and sat down. Now what? I was so in shock after seeing them that there were hardly any thoughts in my head. My dad broke the silence. He asked me how I was, and he asked about my husband and children. 
I wasn't aware that they knew about my family at all, and they said that my brother told them. My brother and I are connected through social media. After some small talk, I just couldn't help but address the elephant in the room. I asked my parents what they were doing in my house after almost a decade of no contact between us. Both of them looked uncomfortable and told me that they had run out of their money. My mother didn't even have money to buy the raw materials for her sculptures, so she couldn't make art, and they had no place to stay. This was a lot of information for me to take in. My first thought was, where's their son now? Couldn't they go to him and ask for some of the money they had given him? As if she could read my mind, my mom told me that my brother was useless. To my shocked face, she said that he had blown through all the money left to him by buying a huge house and living beyond his means. His only source of income was renting most of his home as an Airbnb, which was barely enough money for him to get by. This was all brand new information for me, and I was just stunned. So that was how the golden child ended up, the person who was always praised, always preferred over me. I could hardly believe my ears. I was still processing my thoughts when my mom said that she had to ask me for a huge favor. I could already see where this was going, but asked her what she wanted. She asked me if I can let them stay at my place for a while and help them pay off their debts. My dad said that I was their only option and they didn't know what to do. I wish I could explain how that made me feel. I had spent my entire childhood dying for their approval, and now they were begging me for help. I know that we should be the bigger person in such scenarios, but I couldn't get over the resentment I felt for my parents my entire life and turn them down. I told them they can't live with me and that I didn't have any money for their debts. I also told them they should make my brother kick out his Airbnb guests to make space for them because, after all, the only reason he even has that house is because of their money. My mom tried to say something, but I told her that they needed to leave because I was getting late for work. After they left, I woke my husband up and told him everything. He knows everything about my childhood, but said that I should have still helped them out. I still stand by my decision, but my husband said I was harsh. AITA for refusing to help my parents? Many people have asked me about my brother. We were never really close. As a kid, I think he just loved all the attention, and by the time we grew up, I had so much resentment for him that we could never really have a close sibling relationship. I don't care, though. To be very, very honest, it gives me a very selfish, satisfactory feeling to know that he's basically a failure right now. He couldn't even stick to the one thing he was good at, which was art. I haven't reached out to him about mom and dad, and I don't plan on doing so either. I'm willing to maybe hear him out if he reaches out to me first, but nothing except that. My brother reached out to me. This was the first time I have talked to him in literally ages, and it was honestly kind of weird. He told me that mom and dad had been pressuring him to let them stay with him, and he said I had to be the one to help them out because I'm rich. After reading a lot of comments saying that I'm obligated to help out my parents financially because they paid for my college, I was considering helping them out. But the conversation with my brother and the tone he used has just pissed me off. And I told him they have every right to ask him for help because they have paid for whatever he owns. And it's not my fault that he's an unemployed loser. We had a huge fight and I don't know what's going to happen about my parents, and honestly, I don't really think I care anyway. They should have known better to give up their whole life based on superstition and not even give me a penny out of it. If they had just listened to me in the first place all those years ago and not moved, none of us would have been in this situation. My husband made me make a deal with my brother. I'm honestly not happy about this, but I guess I'll live with it as long as they leave me alone. I was getting tired of all the emotional manipulation my mom was trying to pull on me. The deal is this. My brother will stop renting out his place for a while and let our parents stay at his place. 
I will help them out with some money for the whole debt situation. My only condition is that I'll only pay them once and I don't want to be contacted by them again after that. I doubt how well they'll hold up their end of the deal, but I'm serious when I say this is the first and last time I'm giving them any money. Next time they're in trouble, they can ask their talented son to take care of it. YTA, I get that they haven't been the best parents ever. I do. But they did pay for your education, as you've said. If they didn't do that, you'd probably be still paying student loans. Take it from someone who's still paying their student loans six years after graduating. Even if you're not comfortable with your parents living with you, I don't see why you can't at least help them out financially. NTA, maybe I'm just being petty, but I don't think you owe your parents anything at all. I mean, they didn't leave you a penny all those years ago. Do you think they'd ever come around if they didn't need money? Absolutely not. I'm glad you stuck by your decision. I, 20, female, have been raised by my dad, 40, male, pretty much my entire life. He and my mom, 40, female, co-parented until I was one, but then she stopped coming to see me as often, and that eventually turned into her barely seeing me at all. When I was four, she married her husband, 43, male, and they ended up moving away and having three kids together. I don't really know them that well, since I live in the same state as my dad, and I didn't visit my mom much when I was younger. My parents basically had an unofficial agreement when my mom left that she would pay my college tuition to make up for my dad never asking for child support. I'm at a community college and I've gotten a few scholarships, so the payments have never been above $600. I have a semester left until I graduate and I've already registered for the courses, so I texted my mom and told her what the down payment was and when it was due. She responded back, saying that since I'm an adult and I have a job, I can afford the payments myself. I asked if she just couldn't afford to send anything right now, which would be fine. I wouldn't be upset about it or anything. But then she said that she shouldn't have to give money to me when I'm grown and no longer her responsibility. I ended up paying for it because I didn't want to deal with the overcharge fees, but I had to pick up an extra shift at work since I still needed to afford other stuff. My dad asked me why I was going in on my day off. I live at home with him. So I told him that I picked up another shift since I used my paycheck for tuition and I wanted to make up at least some money. He asked why I paid my tuition. And I said it was because my mom said she wouldn't. He ended up calling my mom while I was at work and basically telling her that if she didn't adhere to their agreement for as long as I'm in school, then he was going to go for back pay on child support and formally charge her for it. She texted me a few times, pissed that I told my dad about it. She said that it's only one semester and I'm an adult now, so I should be expected to pay for it myself. I feel like a bit of an A.H. now since I guess I didn't really have to get my dad involved and tell him about it, but also like considering that the most she ever spent on me when I was a kid were the cost of a birthday card plus postage stamp once a year. I think paying for community college is a fair trade. Still, I just wanted to know if I was T.A. here. It's really screwed up that after she agreed to support you by paying for your tuition, she turns around and tries to make her agreement meaningless by using the excuse that you're now 20 and can support yourself. Even worse, she walked out on you as a baby and left your dad to raise you for the past 19 years and had three more kids without paying a dime in child support. I would go ahead and pay for the tuition myself and would tell my dad to go ahead and take her to court for all the back pay she owes in child support. At this point, the amount she owes could probably even be considered a felony, and I hope she gets held accountable for all of it. NTA. NTA. It was her responsibility to pay for the tuition now. 
your dad should have gotten that put into writing officially. So that's a bit messed up because anything unofficial can be undone and is just looked at as a he said, she said situation. But you are being responsible. You are going to school and working. The fact that you still paid the money and picked up extra shifts to take care of your bills shows me that you're a responsible person instead of just going straight to your dad and saying you can't take the classes. So props to you. Sorry your mom didn't step up. Divorce sucks. But she could have been around even after getting remarried and that's on her. I, 22 female, recently moved to cross country and now work for a business with odd hours, meaning sometimes I overlap with co-workers and sometimes I don't. We all work independently and have very different schedules, which leads us to have team meetings at night outside of normal work hours. With winter and daylight savings in full swing by the time we get out of the meeting, it's dark out. This leads me to the issue at hand. One of my co-workers, D, 30-ish, moved here from out of the country and doesn't have a car, US license yet, so she walks to work. D and I are on friendly terms, but work is work. I'm not friends with any of my co-workers. I don't attend team lunches or events unless they are required. With the time change and it being dark out, D no longer wants to walk home after the meetings. She expects one of us to drive her home. Mainly, it's been me. I don't love that. She doesn't ask normally. She'll do one of two things. She'll tell me I'm her ride or, even more frustrating, just walk with me to my car. Driving with D is very stressful as she won't give me her address and just directs by saying turn left, turn right. She has also just told me to pull over and has had me stop in the street to let her out if I miss a turn. I have severe driving anxiety. Example, can't get through the drive through or car washes and hate night driving. It's only made worse by having other people in the car and not being sure where I'm going. By the time I get home, I'm stressed and super anxious. A few nights ago, we had our meeting. We're assigned our tasks for the week and told we could do them now or start them later. Dee started doing her tasks. I picked up my list and belongings, said goodbye to our boss, and left. When I got home, I had four calls and three voicemails from Dee asking where I'd gone when I knew I was her ride home. It was late, so I ignored it and went to bed. Since then, I've been approached by several of our co-workers saying I'm a bad feminist and not a team player for leaving her to walk home. My co-workers didn't volunteer to drive her either. I explained to them she hadn't asked me beforehand but was told that doesn't matter. Women shouldn't leave women behind. I feel like she didn't ask. It wasn't my responsibility. But all our other co-workers are on her side and are calling me an a-hole. I've talked to some friends about it and they're split on the matter. So AITA? Her refusing to give her address and insisting on giving directions would be an absolute deal breaker for me. I use GPS because then I can plan ahead in my own way and time according to driving conditions. If I'm giving someone a ride, I expect them to provide the address and then sit down and shut up until we get there, and I may need them to identify the exact house. The only other input they need to give would be if there's something that GPS doesn't show. A private road right at the end, for example, or a temporary road closure due to construction or road repairs. So if and when you drive her again, I'd encourage you to make that a firm requirement. A pedestrian simply doesn't see the route the way a driver does, and their input is unreliable. NTA. Here's the thing. She's OP, not the AH, but this is one of those times when someone needs to have a spine. If you do not want to take her home, then it's your responsibility to say that in no uncertain terms. What you're doing is letting it linger and not having a clear 
I will not take you home, or I don't mind taking you home from time to time, but you need to ask me in advance, and I'm under no obligation to say yes. Furthermore, ask for her address before she gets in your car. If she doesn't want to give it to you, then no ride. Many of these issues are easily solvable on this site if one would simply speak the frick up. NTA. NTA. BS on the feminist statement. A woman is capable of getting themselves to and from work. She doesn't need to force another woman, not even ask force. She doesn't need to force another woman, not even ask force, to do something for them. There is car share services and public transport, or she can ask someone who is there for a ride. This woman is incredibly entitled. And your other co-workers are contemptible. You do need to get a backbone and tell Dee that you are not her ride, period. Will it make you friends? No. But as you stated, no one else wants the chore either. Maybe Dee will stand on her own two feet and find her own way to and from work.